Have we spoken about Milak? No, go for it. Get the Milak. <laughs> so we have breaking news out of Hungary that uh, Christoph Milak is back on the uh, campaign. His old coach, Fiat Bolas, obviously returned from World Championships in Doha and they've had a meeting and he's started back training with him at, there at Duna Arena for the last three weeks. And my insider says that he is fully committed now to the, the program. Five months he's got to get it on. And mm. it's going to be interesting to see that if he can connect that all together, he's, he's got to be half a chance at least with his skill in that 200 fly. Milak's back, eh? Hey? Milak. Yeah. Olympic yeah. year. No one can withstand it. Everyone has to be there. He knew it. He timed it perfectly too. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all these guys, hold them at bay, and then when it's time to come back, I'm coming back. And he knew that. And it's time. When you're the fastest and the best of all time, does it make it easier because it's you against you, and you know that if you're at a, a certain ability and a, you're doing certain sets, that you, you're pretty much unstoppable. It's not even that, Kurt. He was four seconds ahead of the rest of the world. That's how much domination he had. You know what I mean? It's like, it wasn't like it was close. It was like, this guy's, this guy's three, four seconds ahead of anybody. So for him, it's like, hey, I can sit back for a while and let them try and catch up to me because I'm so far ahead. It's, like, it's ridiculous how good he is and how far ahead he was. And then Dressel's back in the 100. So I think that's going to be a legitimate battle with those guys. And that's what Milak was wanting. Milak was wanting someone to be on his butt so that he could then have some pressure in practice because practice was boring to him because he was so far ahead, I'd imagine. 